Hi, my name is Katina. I'm very excited. I have a short time to speak with you today. And the Lord has been laying on my hand for quite some time. Uh, just kind to help those out there that have been asking for assistance in when you're serving um, spiritual leadership authority, evangelists, prophets, bishops, prophets, and you've probably been asked to serve them in a capacity of an armor bearer, a cup bearer, a burden bearer, or even an intercessor, whatever it may be. So you've been asking me to, um, mostly you can't wait to, for, I need to just drop these nuggets that is going to, and I pray with the help of the Holy Spirit, I pray that so many of y'all been asking, hallelujah, we thank you to, for this assistant. One of the mistakes I believe that we as pastors sometimes make as we grab somebody from the pew or uh, one of our congregants that maybe because they're simplifying servanthood skills or maybe they've been faithful member that bear around you for a while, but we never really take the time to give them some guidelines on how to serve a do's or not to do's. And this is, of course, has led a lot of people, be a leader or even a person serving a leader, into a lot of problems. Hallelujah. We thank you, God. And in a, in, in a overall being, I'm going to give you little nuggets, 20 or 20 nuggets, you may be dedicated, servant bearer, armor bearer, cup bearer, intercessors who've been called by God to work with or serve your spiritual leader. Amen. So with the capacity, with ministry capacity that you're, I'm going to give you guidelines working with or for your pastor or spiritual leaders. And I need to follow the information as I'm giving you a comply by the leading of the Holy Ghost for everyone is working with, is serving with God, apostles, prophets, bishops, or, or their single pastors. So I need you to be ready. I, I need you to grab a pen and paper and write it in your notepad. And number one, respect or honor should be the whole nine position while serving your pastors or spiritual leaders in any capacity. So respect and honor should be the hallmark position of serving your pastor with spiritual leaders in any capacity. Number two, you should pray before entering their quarters and count it a privilege and an honor to be able to serve them in any capacity. And it whether it's in their home, their vehicles, office, kitchen, or whether you're in the church and wherever it's placing you in the ministry, and number three, if your pastor is is married, you should engage in a proper protocol by ensuring him or her spouse is aware of your duties prior to entering their space. Your pastor spouse should never be surprised that you're in their private space or area without their unknown. Whatever you do, make sure that that pastor spouse is aware that you're going to be in their home, you're going to be in the office, you're going to be in the vehicles, you're going to be in their quarters. Don't let the other spouse be surprised to see you in the office, um, in the personal spaces that's in the um, church or in the ministry. If you are in the opposite spec, you should show respect to the spouse by ensuring that they are aware of whether the services are being rendered. No spouse like a surprise. Or, you know, some of them get surprised if they're not in that conversation of your being there. If they have a personal assistant, that person could also be notified prior to you coming in their personal space. Number six, I know you need to remember that the pastor is not your buddy or good friend. So they should not be treated as such a good old buddy or friend or pal. You should always respect them, that leader for who they are in your life. And number seven, you should keep your personal business and your family care out of the heirs of your pastor, as this is their private space, and you should not be overtaken by your woes unless they reach out to you. I need you to understand it. Keep your personal business and your family cares out of the heirs of your pastor's your leadership 
in their personal time and it should not be overtaken by your woes unless they reach out to you. So number eight, whenever job or jobs assignments you are given by your pastor, it should be treated with the strictest of confidence and never discussed with others, not even your spouse or your family members. Number nine, you should always dress appropriately, wearing a proper clothes or clothing at all times. Hallelujah. And you should never wear clothes that are seductive in nature, short, low cup, overveiling parts of your body. Okay, you should always dress appropriately. Number 10, personal hygiene is very important. Hallelujah, we bless you, God, with their pastor. And you should practice their personal hygiene, like washing your hands, like making sure you took a shower or make sure wearing deodorant. And your pastor should never be forced to bear arms or excessive foot odors or bad breath at any level of that nature. So I want you to realize likewise, I'm a bear should be not forced to bear such hygiene issues. Number 11, the pastor should never be feel uncomfortable having you in their quarters, you in their vehicles, workspace, or neither should you, well, you should, you should not feel uncomfortable if for whatever reason, and the next one we're going for, every reason you may feel very uncomfortable, okay, being asked to do something or do anything in their quarters that you should respectfully say, and you should not be feeling obligated to do it. Never compromise your Christian standards just to appease or please your leadership. Remember, God is the sovereign ruler. God is the leader of all leaders. And so, hallelujah, thank you, God. You should always feel like you need to please God and those that call to serve. Ephesians 4, 27, very clear, give no space to the devil. So moving forward, never compromise and trust the compromise or trust of your pastor by peering into their conversation, which each does not concern you. And okay, do not compromise the trust of your pastor or your leaders by peering into their conversation that be having with each other or with someone else. It's not your business when they're on their phones or in a conversation in a group or with a spouse or with other leadership. Only give your opinion when you're asked and keep your opinion limited and biblical base. Otherwise, work in silence. And number 14, always ask if you can play soft background music and you should never okay for them that you put on that music or put on your headphones. Always ask this question. You should never ever consume. Assume that your apostle and leader should never consume an entire atmosphere with your music or even your cell phone conversation. Number 15, not because you're asked to the personal property makes it that you abuse their property or feel that it's okay by using what belongs to them for their personal benefits. So you got to ask for permission if you need something from them. It, it, that, it sometimes some of them might help you out, and some it, 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 not because um, if you're organizing a bathroom or cleaning a bathroom, you have the liberty to sit in pastor's bathroom. It used to take care of your business unless they offer it to you. And appliances, the vacuums, a pastor's not using a vacuum tonight. I want to borrow it, run to my house, vacuum it, and bring it back. You know, their blow dryers, their combs. Um, he or she have black hair, you have blonde hair, and I'm able to use their comb. So that anything that is theirs within servant leadership. And next, do not steal from your past. Stealing is an offense, and you can stand the risk of becoming an curse on your life. So you should make it your best practice to always surrender, change, or receipts for anything you're asked to purchase. Money or items you may see around does not belong to you. So 
leave it there. Number 17, do not be a beggar in the presence of your pastor or your spiritual leader or feel a degree of entitlement because you see something you need, but it belongs to your pastor. And I need you to understand, can I have this or borrow that? Don't do that. Always be grateful that you're in their midst and you've been asked to serve. Never, ever take it for granted. Number 18, never bring anyone in their home or personal space unless you've been authorized to do so. Remember, it's their private space in their office in their study room, if you're responsible for the housekeeping, cooking, etc., etc., grant writing, clothing, their food should be protected or handled with the strictest of care. Please do not leave their laundry unattended or or trust no one and not be designated to deal with. If you're like person that's cleaning the office. Some pastors are very private when it comes to going to their office and you're doing paperwork for them. And these times we're now living in number 20, I do not allow people to send messages with you to give to your pastor because why they know you're in their presence. So amen. Use the right protocol, a direct to the right protocol. And number 21, remember the pastor's privileges are not your privileges. Whatever blessings are offered to come to or afforded to them does not mean it does not it should include you. Now I need to remind you that everybody knows Geza Elijah Armor Barrett and, and the Bible says. Second Kings seven, when needed to Syrian, came to Elijah seeking a miracle to be healed from his leprosy. God used Elijah to speak a word to what he did seven times. And then the and leprosy left them. And Gabriel leprosy left them. And he came back to Elijah and said, What can I give you? What can I give you for this? And Elijah said, No, I would take nothing, just go. And the gay has I, Elijah Armor Bear ran on to the chariot and took all the godly garments, gold and silver. And, and you know the story. Later on, Elijah saw in the spirit and said, the same leprosy I took for Naaman, I now put it on you. So that's a word to the wise as an armor bearer, sermon bearer, cup bearer, wherever you are bearer, remember that your leader's portion is not your portion. And number 22, remember, be a member in their church and their spiritual sons and daughters and not yours. Therefore, do not expect people to serve you just because you serve the pastor. Wow. I like, I like um, receive certain things like that. So, and keep their space clean and clean their vehicles. Never feel comfortable driving with or driving the pastor in a dirty car. Clean up before or after you. And number 24, always use clean glasses or clean utensils. Don't use dirty ones to serve them or any of that nature. And remember always to wrap the glass with a clean hand towel. And please avoid coughing, sneezing, and uh, over their drinks and food. And chances are if you have a servant and you are sick, you would make the leader sick. And that's the last thing you want. And of course, by no means, please, and we don't have no more time. The Lord want me number 25, at which I, I started with earlier. Pray without ceasing. As an um, uncurt bird, someone that is called to serve in the ministry with your set man, woman of God, remember to pray without ceasing. And praying servant is a trusted servant. A trusted servant, amen, will stay until the spiritual leader gets promoted and taken up. Amen. So keep praying. Call your pastor. Call their names in, in prayer every single day unto the Lord. And I promise you that God will bless you for being a true and a faithful servant unto your leaders. And so these are a few nuggets, a few points that I want to leave with you. And especially those this Trust in a position that you're in and serve with your leadership, your prophet, your bishops, your pastors, 
your apostles and God wants to protect you and protect your spiritual leader. So protecting integrity of their ministry. Amen. And so these are the things that I want to drop out to you today. If you feel you need or help, please don't hesitate to pick up the phone, a prayer call, pray the um, strategy prayer room. And there's a link on the side where you can connect with us. And also, if you become a partner, if you become a partner, um, being a partner, you have um, private um, ministering, private um, meetings as a global partner. And um, I thank God for you joining me today. I bless God. Please follow the link to become a partner. Um, if you would love to become a member, there's also a link as well. Um, I look forward to you joining me in the next video. And may God bless you. And may God keep you. It's my prayer.